Last week I gave a fire safety talk. <clears throat> and nobody paid any attention. It's my own fault for using PowerPoint. People learn in lots of different ways. But experience is the best teacher. Today, smoking is going to save lives. I'll start with the obvious here. Funny or funniest is subjective, as everyone has a different sense of humor and everyone has a different opinion. That said, a lot of people think The Office is absolutely hilarious, myself included. Ricky Gervais created the original UK version in 2001, and then the US version came out a few years later in 2005. The NBC reboot was one of the most popular shows on television, despite its rocky start, and is perhaps even more popular now in syndication on dozens of networks and streaming services following the Seinfeld model for success. According to Gervais, the mockumentary-style comedy only works because the characters talk to the camera. We see their inner thoughts and then their actions, which are usually two very different things. This follows the idea that we judge ourselves on intentions and judge others on actions. In addition, the characters within the office do not know they're being funny, or at least that's the way it's portrayed. Within these boundaries, the show relies heavily on dialogue, but in one particular episode, there are two iconic moments of visual or physical comedy that stand out perhaps the most of all nine seasons of the series. And they both happen in the episode called Stress Release, which aired after the Super Bowl 43 back in 2009. This brilliant episode was written by the actor who plays Toby, Paul Lieberstein. First, Dwight starts a small fire in the office because he believes his subordinates are not prepared for any real danger that might happen. Through this incident, we see the panic increase as the various characters start to reveal themselves, panic more and more, and basically push everyone else aside in an effort to fend for themselves. This idea also happened on Seinfeld and in the new Will Ferrell movie, Downhill. But what's so great about this show is that we get to see the characters come alive and show their true selves. Dwight is somewhat insane, despite his well intentions. Oh, here's the door! Check that one out! He's the calmest person in the room during the scene, but that's because he's the arsonist. Andy is completely foolish the fire shooting at us! and unable to handle confrontational situations. Angela is mostly selfish until it comes to helping her cats. Oscar also only cares about himself, and despite being the smartest person in the room, he too folds under pressure but does try a unique approach to escape. Kevin is so food obsessed he begins to riot the vending room. Michael calls out for help, despite the fact it's unlikely anyone will hear him. Pam spots the fire and tries to help everyone escape. Jim only cares about saving Pam and tries to assemble a team to escape the locked inferno. Everyone else sort of just falls into a herd as Dwight gives instructions, and as always, Toby is mostly overlooked. After Dwight admits the fire is fake, there's a quick scene where Dwight is reprimanded at corporate with Michael. Even though Michael isn't really aware, he's also in trouble until halfway through the meeting, and then we're back to another visual, comedic scene. Because Dwight's fire drill caused Stanley to have a heart attack, the gang is forced to attend a CPR class in the meeting room. Michael is told to give compressions to the beat of staying alive by the Bee Gees. Andy starts to sing, Kelly starts to dance, and during the panic, Dwight cuts open the face and stomach of the dummy to check for organs and play Hannibal. Oh my god! Oh my god. Yeah, it's all ridiculous, but that's why it's so funny. It's heightened reality, as anyone who's ever been in an office can agree there are daily eye-rolling moments of mandatory stupidity. And these two scenes are so iconic because they're visual instances in a verbal series. With physical or visual comedy, scenes are presumably more expensive to shoot as you can see stunt performers for Oscar and Angela and lots more setup. But they also require more of a performance from the actors as opposed to hitting marks, eyeing the camera in a sarcastic way, or even just spitting out funny lines. That's what she said! <laughs> Every Frame of Painting did a masterful job on explaining visual comedy from writer-director Edgar Wright, so I won't dive too deep into this explanation as you can find the link below, but we do see a few examples in the scenes such as entering and exiting frame in a funny way. 
like when Oscar falls through the ceiling and when Angela throws her cat into the ceiling, along with leaving frame and back again shot, which is also seen when Oscar and Angela, and finally we see let confident suggestions go haywire, which is the whole scene really, but also the printer being slammed into the locked door. So why is this episode so funny and so beloved by fans? Besides the fact it's instantly hilarious, it's also timeless. Don't open your eyes. What? Oh. Over time, the evolution of comedy moved from comedic stunts to slapstick to visual comedy to written comedy focused on dialogue. You reach over and touch his thing. That's what he said, right? Prevalent in American television and movies today, but a combination of these various styles is what makes something truly memorable, like this episode. These are relatively simple actions which are likely equally funny when written on the page, but to take it a step further, it really depends on character and then perform it. Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton began this evolution in the silent era, when visual comedy was everything. The Marx Brothers continued with slapstick skits, and this is also true for the Three Stooges. Then there's Jerry Lewis as the energetic comedian. We had Peter Sellers as the Pink Panther. Rowan Atkinson as the boneheaded Mr. Bean. Jackie Chan combines comedy with action like his predecessors. Jim Carrey, originally nicknamed Rubberface early in his career, rose to fame basically acting like a cartoon on screen. And Sasha Baron Cohen as a physical comedian who brings the performance to the real world in a completely daring and new way with each project. No matter what you think of these performances though, in every case, it's hard to think of anyone else taking on any of these roles, hence the term performance rather than acting. No one else could have been Ace Ventura, no one else could have been Borat. And some would even argue the crew behind Jackass also fit the mold as stunt performers within this world of comedy. As for funny or funniest though, besides hearing countless people talk about stress relief being their favorite episode, it's also ranked third on IMDb amongst the best of The Office with a 9.7 out of 10 stars. Number one and two on that list are the finale and Goodbye Michael in that order, which are highly emotional episodes that sort of wrap up the whole thing. But that's also what the series is known for, and in the background of the two-part episode, Pam's parents are going through a divorce, and that appears to be caused by Jim just speaking to Pam's dad. What could Jim have said to make my dad want to leave my mom? And at what point in our marriage is he going to say it to me? In reality, this too is a matter of perspective. Was it my fault? Yeah. He said that you told him how much you love me. About how you feel when I walk in a room. And about how you've never doubted for a second that I'm the woman you want to spend the rest of your life with. I guess he's never felt that with my mom, even at their best. You okay? Yeah. And finally, in the second part of this 45-minute special, we see Michael's realization that he's actually the true stressor in the office. A rose for him, which upsets his vulnerable state, and then after some contemplation, his rebuttal, which buttons the episode as it began and ended with Michael and Stanley somewhat screwing off and then coming back together. <clears throat> Jim, you're 6'11", and you weigh 90 pounds. Gumby has a better body than you. Boom. Roasted. Dwight, you're a kiss-ass. Boom. Roasted. Meredith, you've slept with so many guys, you're starting to look like one. Boom. Roasted. Kevin, I can't decide between a fat joke and a dumb joke. Boom. Roasted. Stanley, you crush your wife during sex and your heart sucks. Boom. Roasted. Oscar, you are... <laughs> Oscar, <laughs> you're gay. Wow. Andy Cornell call. They think you suck. And you're gayer than Oscar. Boom roasted. Boom roasted. <laughs> Let me know your favorite episode of The Office in the comments below, and make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to get my weekly videos. You'll also see links to additional videos and references below. Thanks again for watching. They say that laughter is the best medicine, so Stanley, you can throw away those pills. You are cured.